Washington, D.C. is the nation's capital. It is being roiled by protest. And it is the one jurisdiction where the army can deploy without needing approval from a governor. So President Trump, declaring that the destruction of peaceful life and the spilling of blood is against humanity and God, ordered the army to deploy an active duty military police battalion for Washington, Defense Department officials said Monday. The deployment of the military police unit, some 200 to 500 troops, from Fort Bragg, N.C., is a sharp escalation in the response to riots and protests that have erupted in the capital. Other jurisdictions have spurned such assistance. Governor Tim Walz of Minnesota declined Mr. Trump's offer of military police to respond to protests in his state, and other governors followed his lead, instead choosing to rely on their own National Guard troops. In Washington, the decision to deploy military police falls under Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy. Mr. Trump made clear, defense officials said, that he wanted the Pentagon to push back forcefully against protests in the nation's capital. The decision is all POTUS, one Defense Department official said, using the acronym for President of the United States. The deployment, first reported by CNN, will be to provide security, not law enforcement, defense officials said, but it is unclear how the two functions will remain separate. Mr. Barr also has stepped up the local response by federal law enforcement. According to Justice Department officials, the Attorney General summoned hostage rescue teams to Washington around midnight on Sunday, and the department said it would increase the presence of federal law enforcement in the city again on Monday night. Mr. Barr also directed the Bureau of Prisons to send special operation response teams, or riot teams, to the Capitol. Competing autopsies say Floyd's death was a homicide, but differ on causes. Two autopsies released on Monday agreed, George Floyd's death was a homicide. But the autopsies, one by a government agency and one by doctors working with the Floyd family, differed over the specific causes of death and whether there were contributing factors beyond the Minneapolis police officer kneeling on his neck. The Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office said Mr. Floyd had died of cardiopulmonary arrest complicating law enforcement subdual, restraint, and neck compression. The medical examiner also cited significant contributing conditions, saying that Mr. Floyd suffered from heart disease, and was high on fentanyl and had recently used methamphetamine at the time of his death. The coroner's conclusions differed from the results of a private autopsy commissioned by Mr. Floyd's family, which was released a few hours earlier. That autopsy said Mr. Floyd died not just because of the Minneapolis police officer's knee lodged at his neck, but also because of the other officers who helped hold him down. Dr. Alicia M. Wilson of the University of Michigan and Dr. Michael Baden, a former New York City medical examiner, were hired by Mr. Floyd's family to help determine his cause of death. Dr. Baden said their autopsy shows that Mr. Floyd had no underlying medical problem that caused or contributed to his death. Derek Chauvin, the former police officer who was seen in a video kneeling on Mr. Floyd's neck, even after Mr. Floyd lost consciousness, has been charged with third-degree murder. Antonio Romanucci, a lawyer for the family, said that the weight of two other police officers on Mr. Floyd's back had prevented blood from reaching his brain and air from reaching his lungs. Chief Madaria Arredondo of the Minneapolis Police Department said in an interview with CNN on Sunday that three former officers who were present when Mr. Chauvin kneeled on Mr. Floyd's neck, and who did not intervene, were complicit in his death. 